I'm going to show you how to do what I call the 333 ripple stitch. The reason I call it the 333 chevron stitch or ripple stitch is because it follows a very easy to remember stitch sequence. Three in one, one in each of the next three, crochet three together, th one in each of the next three, three in one and so forth. The only part that's slightly different is the starts and the ends of the round of the rows. So the start and end of each row falls in the middle halfway through one of these increases, a peak. So we just put two stitches in instead of three. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm using this cotton yarn called um, the Cotton from We Are Knitters. Uh, admittedly, it is quite a pricey yarn. Um, there are alternatives which I'll put that are slightly cheaper that I'll put links uh, in the caption of the video. Um, but I do really love this yarn. It is very good quality. It's beautifully soft. But you could also make this stitch in any combination of uh, yarn thickness and matching or corresponding hook size. I'll also provide a list of suggested hook sizes in the caption or uh, I'm probably going to create a web page for this. There'll be a lot more information on there. So please do check out at my website. So I'm using a four millimeter hook for this basically worsted weight cotton yarn. And to um, swatch for this stitch I'm going to make this washcloth and actually the washcloth I'm making I'm going to be uh, also just adding in some stripes with this other colour because I don't think I've got quite enough of this one left so it also gives me an opportunity to show you uh, how to change colour at the end of a row in case you want to make a uh, stripey um, fabric version of this chevron stitch so let's go we are going to chain 44. So this is for this um, washcloth. We need 44 chains um, to get basically one, two, three, four peaks of the pattern repeat. So let's chain 44. You don't want this too tight. You don't want it too loose either because this is uh, going to be the base of your washcloth or whatever blanket or whatever you're making. Actually, this one I've made here maybe slightly too tight. You can see it's sort of pulling in. This hasn't been washed or blocked, so hopefully that will rectify that. Anyway, 44. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go off and do that um, and I'll meet you back here in a minute when I've finish doing that. 44. So I can't actually be bothered to count those um, so I'm going to add on an extra four um, just in case I miscounted and I'm a few short um, because it's quite straightforward to unravel from this end um, but it's not straightforward to try and add on extra extra chains when you come to the end of this. This is a really useful tip if you're making a blanket or something as well where you have to chain hundreds. Um, just whack on a bunch, you know, if you've got a chain of hundreds you've got to do, I, I would even add on like about 40 stitches or something, 40 chains. So the first thing we're going to do, so this setup round is a bit of an anomaly. The setup round into the chain is slightly different than the rest of the stitch sequence. So we are going to put one double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and we're going to be working into the back ridge of the chain. So this is the front of the chain, the part that looks like a braid and if we flip it over we've got this, if we hold it horizontal, we've got this sort of horizontal, almost looks like a pearl bump in crochet in knitting. So that's what we're going to be working into because the edge of our um, blanket or flannel, we want it to have this nice finish so the top and bottom matches. So this is US terminology, which so this is a UK, uh, a US double crochet. If you are British, this is a treble and it is a treble crochet throughout. 
So I will be describing this in American terminology, which I call international. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're from Britain. So fourth chain from the hook. So I'm going to count these back ridges here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to double crochet into there. So this little section of chain that I've just skipped, that is going to count as a stitch. And that is an anomaly for this very first uh, row in the starting chain, which I'll just call the setup row. Now we're going to put one double crochet into each of the next three of these ridges. One, two, three. So this is quite splitty, this yarn, but uh, you do get used to it. So in essence, this edge that we've just done, because we've put two stitches in one, um, that is part of an increase of these chevrons. So the way these chevrons work, if you're not familiar, is every time you make an increase, it makes like a little hill. And every time you make a decrease, it makes like a little valley. And because of the way we've started this motif, uh, this, this stitch pattern, we're sort of starting halfway through a hill. So we've just got two stitches. Then we're going to put one double crochet. We have just put one double crochet into each of the next three chains, backs of the chains. And now we're going to do a double crochet three together. So we're going to be working into these next three back ridges of the chain. Yarn over into the next stitch, pull up a loop. You've got three, yarn over, draw off two. We're not going to finish this stitch now. We're going to move ahead to make the next stitch yarn over into the next back ridge of the next chain pull up a loop you should have four on the hook now then you're going to yarn over and draw off two and again we're not going to finish that one off quite yet you should now have three loops on your hook yarn over into the next back ridge of the next chain pull up a loop you should have five loops on your hook yarn over draw off two now you should have four, which comprise of three partially made double crochets and the live loop on the hook. You're going to yarn over and you're going to draw off all three stitches in one go. And what you've done is you've turned three stitches into one. Three legs or three posts with only one stitch at the top. Next, and this is the terminology I like to make for making chevron stitch stitches is we've just made a valley we need to work our way up the hill now so we're just going to put one stitch into each of the next three back ridges of the chain two three we've gone up the hill now we need to make the top of the hill which is three double crochets into one chain one two, three. So you can already see the shape of the chevron forming. We've got a valley, we've gone up the hill and then we've made a hill. Now we're going to go down the hill. And again, that is just one double crochet into each of the next three back ridges of the three chains. Two, Three. Now you're ready to make another valley. The another valley, the next valley. Uh, double crochet three together. Yarn over into the next back ridge of the next chain. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw off two. Yarn over into the next back ridge of the next chain. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw off two. That's two stitches. Yarn over into the third one. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Draw off two. You've got three partially made stitches and your live loop. You're going to yarn over and draw off all of those loops. And you've just made a double crochet, three together. We're in the valley. We've made the valley. We need to go back up the hill. One double crochet into each of the next three stitches.
now we need to make the top of the hill three double crochet into the next chain we've made the top of the hill another top of a hill we've made a third the second hill we've got half hill there first hill second hill now we're going to go down the hill one double crochet into each of the next three stitches that is two that is three make the valley double crochet three together yarn over into the next chain pull up a loop yarn over draw off two yarn over into the next chain pull up a loop yarn over draw off two yarn over into the back of the next chain pull up a loop yarn over draw off two yarn over finish off all three stitches in one go yarn over one double crochet into each of the next three stitches to climb up the hill now we need to make the hill three double crochets into the next chain down the hill one double crochet into each of the next three make a valley three double cro uh, double crochet three together So what we're aiming for is three hills and four valleys, three full hills, four valleys and two half hills. So we've got one, two, three, just made the fourth. I'm coming up. So I need one in each of the next three. Remember, I have got some extra chains. So let's have a quick double check of where I'm at. Three hills, one, two, three. One, two, three, four valleys. I've got one half hill. So now I'm ready to finish, uh, make the edge of this uh, little swatch or washcloth, whatever we're gonna make. So I'm going to put two stitches into the next chain and remember I chained an extra four one two three four so I was completely on target but as you can imagine the longer this is the more there's room for a little bit of error with your chain count so that's just a little safety net there and I'll unpick that later let's move to row two so this is row two we're always going to start off with a chain two now this does not count as a stitch and it will never be worked into either i've used this technique for about 10 years now and it's just absolutely brilliant for giving you this super um smart edge without any chain three holes you know like when you start around traditionally with double crochet you start with a chain three to represent the first stitch we're not going to do that we're going to do a chain two all it's going to do is fill a gap make a straight edge we're never going to count it as a stitch and we're never going to work into it either chain two turn the work you're going to put two double crochets into that very first stitch so we're not skipping any stitches we've made our first half hill on the edge of the fabric now we need to go down the hill now this is exactly the same as some elements of this are exactly the same as the start of your your chain sequence stitch setup row now we go into the three 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 pattern one into each of the next three stitches remember you're working through both loops of the stitch from the previous row so that means sometimes they're not that clear to see you need to tilt the work towards you so you can see the the top edge of this stitches which looks like a chain you're going to make a valley i.e. 
double crochet three together. One, two, three, exactly the same as your setup row. Now we're going up the hill. One, two, three, make the top of the hill. One, two, three, go down the hill. One, two, three, make a valley. Double crochet three together. One, two, three. Up the hill. One, two, three. Make a hill. One, two, three. Down the hill. One, two, three. Make a valley. One, two, three. So at this point, I just want to mention some key points about getting this ripple stitch to uh, look really good. So what you want to make sure of, so I'm going up the hill again here, so one double crochet in each of the next three, is that every time you make an increase, i.e. three double crochet into one stitch, that you're always landing, making that increase right in the top of the, of the middle stitch of your previous increase. So if you have a look here from the previous row, I've got one, two, three. I always need to be putting sub subsequent increases in that middle stitch. And remember that looks slightly different from the back than it does from the front. So if you're in doubt as to whether you've gone into the middle stitch because the top of the stitch obviously falls over to the left a lot more when you're looking at the back of the work, flip it over quickly, have a quick look. You can see here one, two, that's the one you want to work into, which means my next increase is perfectly placed to keep this ripple stitch looking great. And that's the biggest um, um, problem that a lot of people have when they're making chevron stitches for the first time, is not stacking up these increases and decreases on top of each other correctly all the time because maybe you lose concentration, maybe you only put two stitches, then you make an increase and then the whole thing becomes um, completely offset. So. Every time you come to make, I find I find um, the increases easier to um, get my eye in on than the decreases. So I just generally concentrate on making sure my increases are always in the right spot. So I've just made an increase. I'm going down the hill. One, two, three. Let's make a valley. I will crochet three together. This is quite splitty, this yarn, but um, I think it's worth it because it does make a beautiful fabric. And now up the last hill, one, two, three. And then just for this row, row two, um, we're working into a chain three. So remember we use part of this starting chain to represent a double crochet. So that means we have to find the the third chain here when we skipped three. And I basically just do that by going into the next chain along from the stitch I've just worked into. So here you can see I've worked into this double crochet here, which means the chain is this very next one there. So you don't even really need to count anything. You just need to work into that chain that's next to the last stitch you just made. Now I'm going to put two double crochets into that chain because we've done a half hill on the edge, remember. So here we are. So this is our first little section. We've got a half hill 
We've got a valley, we've got a full hill, valley, full hill, valley, full hill, valley, half hill on the side. Now we're ready to do row three. So I'm going to do one more row in this colour. So I'm going to chain two. Remember, it doesn't count as a stitch. And we're not going to work into it either on the returning row. And then we're not going to skip any stitches either. We're going to make a half hill at the edge, which is just two double crochets. And then we go into the 3-3-3 three, 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 uh, stitch pattern sequence. One in each of the next three. Double crochet three together. One in each of the next three. Three into the next stitch. Down the hill with three. Make a valley by double crocheting three together. Don't know why this got so knotty. Travel back up the hill, up the next hill, with one in each of the next three. Make the next hill, three in the next stitch. Down the hill, one in each of the next three. Make the valley, double crochet three together. Travel up the next hill, one in each of the next three. I'm going to change colour at the end of this uh, row. Make a hill, three into the next. Down the hill, one into each of the next three. Double crochet three together. Making a valley. And now we're coming up to the last, to the next edge. So we're doing up the hill, one into each of the next three. And then we're gonna make our half hill, but at the same time we're gonna switch colors. So I'm going to get this other color ready. This looks like it's also gonna be a bit tangled. I have had this ball kicking around for a couple of years now, so. So we're gonna make this last edge, but when we're switching colors, we're gonna do something slightly different. So we're gonna put, we've got two stitches in there, remember? We're gonna put one, then we're gonna partially make the second one. So we're gonna yarn over, go into that last stitch, pull up a loop, you've got three, yarn over, draw off two. And we are going to cut this yarn that we're not using anymore. Um, so you need to find some scissors. So leave a tail for sewing in and then you're going to add this next colour, again leaving a long enough tail for sewing in and you're going to actually finish off this last stitch you made with that new colour. So I'll just do, I'll just do that last step again because I was messing around with my yarn. So I've already put one in there, remember this is a half heel on the edge, yarn over into that last stitch, pull up a loop yarn over, draw off two, cut the yarn, haven't finished off this double crochet, instead I'm going to join in my new colour, leaving the tail long enough for sewing in, just going to hold that at the back, I'm going to finish off that stitch, yarn over, draw off two, and then I'm just going to carry on in the same sequence, chain two, remember not counting as any stitch, at the same time I'm actually going to catch in these two ends when I put my first two double crochets in. It just helps a little bit with the sewing in later on and also stops anything coming undone. So I've just caught those two in and now the exactly the same 3 3 3 sequence. Down the hill, three, one in each, double crochet, three together. Three up the hill, one, 
two, three, three at the top of the heel, one in the same stitch, two, three, down the heel, one, two, three. So I'm just going to carry on in this sequence. I'm going to do three rows in this kind of taupe colour and then three rows in this lovely cream. And I'll meet you back when I've made it square. So I'll show you how to make it square. Um, you just keep crocheting and then you lay the piece out in front of you. And then you fold up one corner and if it folds perfectly into the triangle like this you know you've made a square if it's um, if you haven't made enough rows it won't fold into a neat triangle so I've already made this one and I know it's divisible by three therefore I'm going to do three rows in this color three rows in that color and then that should make my square um, the reason I'm doing three rows because I want stripes um, but I don't want to be sewing in loads of ends so fatter stripes fewer ends and so I've just finished this little washcloth not little it's quite a large I like a generous sized washcloth uh, and I'm just going to show you how to sew in the ends it's pretty straightforward and obviously there's lots and lots of different ways you could do this this is just how I'm doing it so if you remember I've already caught the two tail ends in when I made the first switch, first stitch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the, the trick to keeping the ends in is to go one direction and then the other and because these are going to be used probably quite aggressively a face wash is going to be going through the washing machine it's going to be used quite vigorously when you're cleaning yourself so we really want to make sure uh, these ends are sewn in really nicely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back on myself with this with this um, let's do this first color under here first I'm going to catch a little bit of something of the same color and then go back on myself back at the direction I've come and then sew that back one way and then I'm going to weave it in and out of this very like almost like a running stitch splitting the yarn of this first stitch on the edge and sort of popping back out in the at this middle of this cluster here oops she says and I've lost the end I do like to have quite short ends because I don't like a waste waste yarn so I'm going to weave in and out of this first stitch on the edge here like a running stitch make sure it's matching gauge by pulling and then again this the beauty of actually at this point having splitty yarn is quite good because it really helps with sewing in because it helps um, make sure the yarn stays put so I've, I've actually have split this thread here and that means I can run back through this really congested area with that yarn splitting it again and sewing it through there I think I'm actually going to go along a bit more and pop out a bit bit further on. It's good to have quite a sharp needle for this. So if you can find a, that's why the plastic needles are often not very good. Because you need a, quite a sharp tip and a large eye. Um, okay, so, and then this tail end has come this direction, back, round and down there. So it's highly unlikely that that is going to pop out at any point. And then I'm going to do the same with this colour. Instead I'm going to run it up into this section. So run it back by splitting, pop up, half, pop up in the middle of this nice splitty thread. Make sure it's not pulling or puckering anything. Travelling up this this is actually a starting chain on this side 
with a little bit of a running stitch because I want to hide this end in this So let's do that and that I have accidentally pulled it a bit just because I was being slightly aggressive there. I've messed that up a bit but that should be alright. It's quite difficult to do this while while I'm filming. And then I'm gonna run this tail end in this first increase here and let it pop out. These increase areas where you've put multiple stitches into one are the best place to hide ends. And in fact, I might even just go back the other way there. I probably wouldn't usually put as much effort in for this if it was um, a blanket or something. But I think this is going to, as I said, it's going to have a lot more agitation and be put through the wash uh, a lot more times than a blanket would. So I'll do that one more time on the next bit. Um, so we're always trying to work back into the colour that matches the yarn. Here's a very short tail end for this one. And the way I deal with that is to thread the needle first. And I've just dampened my finger a little bit there with a bit of spit, very nice. And then I just use my nails to poke that through. So this one, I don't know if there's actually enough yarn to get that up into that next cluster of stitches on the row above. But I think it'll be all right actually. Look, I'm gonna go into that start of the row where we've got an increase and then hopefully I can hide that in there nicely. Can leave longer tails than that obviously, but you know, it's all money, isn't it? The less tails you have, the more yarn you've got left to make something. And then this one, I'm gonna go down into there. So I'm gonna catch a little catch a little something, come back. So with this, because it's a two-sided thing, I know it's just a washcloth and at the end of the day, it's a practical item. It'd still be nice for it to look nice. So, you know, we can try our best to make it look neat. And again, let's run this little running stitch along here, up and down. Oop, that popped out, actually this is quite a long bit so I think I've got enough tail end there. Up and down, pull it through, go back into this congested area and pop it out. So it's the fact that the, the yarn is traveling in multiple directions is what stops it um, coming undone. And the fact that you've, you've split, split the yarn, split the stitches, that also helps to stop it coming undone. So let's trim that one. Um, and let's just talk about this this tail end here. So remember I made the chain a bit longer. So what you can do is if this knot isn't too tight, you you can unpick it here. If the knot is too tight, you can literally just cut the knot off. Um, it won't really make any difference. Okay. So the thing to remember with when you're undoing a chain in reverse, you can't just um, pull it and it'll unravel like a normal chain like when you're doing it from the other end because every time you undo it it basically ties a knot into itself so what we're going to do here is just undo each loop one at a time and put it through with our wool needle and we just keep pulling 
until we run out of chain and that will just tighten itself off and again with this one there's not much place to sew it in into the starting chain so I'm going to run it up the side of this edge stitch and then into this first set of clusters so let's just do that quickly someone seems to be having a rave next door running it up and down this edge stitch till I come to this first set of increases on the edge and running it through there I might even make sure the tension is matching and catch something maybe something on the inside here I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch that and then go back into that area and pop out just before I hit the edge and then trim so let's have a quick little look here cool um, I've only got a couple of edges left to sew in um, so I'll show you when it's done so here are three different versions of this little washcloth that I've made um, with this one I only had enough colour left to put in two stripes so what's quite useful to do if you want to make a gift set and you've only got a certain amount of yarn and if like me you want to make sure that the um, there's an even distribution of stripes what you can do is make one plain one like this if you have enough yarn uh, making it square so you might have a different row count to me I had a row count of 17 to get it square because that was my personal gauge um, and then I weighed this on some digital scales and then I divided the weight by 17 because that's how many rows I've got so then I could work out how much yarn I used for each row which meant that as I was coming to so I made this one I had a full a full 100 gram bowl of this um, sort of mushroomy colour um, top maybe Oops, dead in there um, this this row this one here um, is actually 18 rows so I'm slightly annoyed um, because it's a little bit bigger and I wanted to have this as a set set of three um, so on in hindsight what I would have done is um, I would have had one less row uh, and maybe I would have distributed these differently anyway it doesn't matter too much it's still I still think that's really nice with the wider stripes and obviously um, you might have heard earlier I said I've done the wider stripes because there's less ends to sew in um, and then with this one I only had a tiny bit of the of the top left and I weighed it and I had enough for two and a half rows so because I had 17 rows I then decided just to have two two stripes evenly evenly spaced so that's just a handy little tip if you want to have um, make sure you have enough yarn to distribute colours of stripes um, differently. So there you go. I think this is a pretty nice little set. Um, I like giving these as Christmas gifts um, with a bar of handmade soap perhaps. Really nice. And also the, the good thing about this... Um, cotton yarn from We Are Knitters. Uh, I don't usually like to promote um, larger yarn brands because I think they've already got enough um, customers and stuff. I generally prefer promoting independent yarn dyers. However, there are not really that many independent yarn dyers that are dyeing with cotton. Um, and then also you've got the issue of these are kind of items that were generally you probably wouldn't use hand dyed yarn to make a washcloth um hand dyed yarn also is not brilliant for washing over and over and over again it's better used for like special pieces like blankets and stuff that are not going to be washed often um this we are knitters cotton the cotton it actually washes really well 
and clearly these are going to be washed multiple times so you need to choose a yarn that's going to withstand that. <laughs> 